Hello students, welcome back to Tuition Masters and today we are here with our biology marathon for grade 9 CBSC for the chapters fundamental unit of life and tissues. So these two chapters the mostly occurring chapters which come in your midterm exams. So for the same I have come up with the biology marathon correct. Uh, so today we are going to uh, learn about these two chapters. I have my detailed videos on the same as well and we are going to discuss the quick summary some important questions as well for both the chapters right. So make sure to like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you didn't do it starting with the first chapter that is fundamental unit of life that is nothing but cell isn't it so in your previous grades also you might have studied this chapter in eighth also the same chapter is that cell structure and function isn't it this is just the extended part you can say of uh, the chapter isn't it? just an extended part where you study about in more detail and a little bit new topics as well okay so let me show you a mind map for both the chapters then we'll uh, do a little bit detail okay so here you see fundamental unit of life that is nothing but cell so basically when i talk about cell cell is a structural and functional unit why because when i talk about structural when I say structural unit, what does it mean is structural unit is nothing but let me explain you. Structural unit as in cells. When I join cells, they make up tissue. So cell and tissues we have already studied, isn't it? Now when many tissues come together, they make an organ, isn't it? They make an organ. Now many organs, they come together, make an organ system, isn't it? They make a organ system and finally what happens is a organism is made so what can we say what is the smallest part of a body of the atom but are not that level according to biology the smallest part is cell because cell combined to make tissue tissue make organ organ make organ system and at that end, organism so that is why we call that cell is the structural unit isn't it so as it is a structural unit correct what happened is it is even the functional unit because each part of a body has different cells isn't it in your muscles and in your lungs do you have the same type of cells no because they have different different functions so different different uh you know the uh function also and so the there is different types of cells all right now based on that we have two types of cells majorly prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes they have a, a primitive nucleus correct instead of nucleus they have a nucleoid okay they have a nu uh, nucleoid okay okay but i'll write it clearly so basically instead of having a proper circular spherical nucleus they have a nucleoid okay that is a open nucleus in the form of strands containing dna mainly that's a dna strand we call it as a nuclear that's primitive but and it doesn't have any organelles no organelles are present only one organelle is present that is uh, ribosomes only ribosomes are present isn't it and also it has a, a flagella cell wall bacterial cell if i'm talking about those are prokaryotes examples bacterial cells they're an example of prokaryotes okay talk about eukaryotes they are all the advanced cells okay all the advanced cells as in the where there are uh, how can i say where there are all the organs there proper nucleus is also there isn't it for example a human cell plant cell uh, all of these cells are eukaryote because we have all the proper things talk about nucleus it is the brain of the cell it is the brain because it controls everything what it has a nuclear membrane for protection it has a mini nucleus known as nucleolus which produces genetic materials and ribosomes okay so nucleus inside of that there is a mini nucleus known as nucleolus and there is chromatin network also which is there for dna and rna and all those things right now next comes the plasma membrane Pla and talk about the organelles okay before going to organ let's do the cell theory so basically there were two scientists 
Sclidon and Schwann. Okay, these two, uh, they were uh, biologists and uh, no botanists and zoologists. Okay, so both of them gave their theories. Both of them gave one one theory. What was that? So basically, they gave the uh, cell theory and stated that all plants and animals are composed of cells. Okay, all plants and animals are composed of cells, and and that cell is a structural functional unit of life. So these two parts of the cell theory was given by Schleiden and Schwann. But what happened was, uh, later on, later on, uh, let me explain you over here. See this. Later on, what happened was, let us talk about Rudolf Virchow. So. Uh, when I talk about Rudolf Virchow, okay, Rudolf Virchow, he gave his own one more part. He gave his extension to the cell theory. That is, all cells, all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Okay, uh, Rudolf Virchow had expanded his theory. And as in Latin, it is known as Omnis Cellular E cellular in latin this was said omnicellular e cellular that means all cells arise from pre-existing cells okay now who was the first person to check this uh, cell who found it it was robert hook robert hook but he saw it in the cork cells in the cork cells okay which was dead cells but after that with the advanced nuclear, sorry, with the advanced microscope, Antonio van Leeuwenhoek was a person who, uh, uh, you know, uh, checked up with the other type of animal cells and named it as animal cues. Okay, now talk about plasma membrane. It is outside the outside the you know it's the outer covering in animal cells. But talking about plant cells, they have one more covering that is cell wall. Okay, now there are many other organelles like plaster, mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, and endoplasmic reticulum. So let's understand about them in details. So let's look at a diagram of animals. A very beautiful diagram, isn't it? You all in your exams they may ask you that this is a diagram, label this, or they may give you any specific diagram or a specific organelle, and they will tell you to write the, uh, you know the function name or whatever okay so let me explain you first one what is this blue color entire thing this is nothing but my nucleus that is my nucleus now this tiny some mini nucleus is my nucleolus okay nucleolus all right now there are many other things what are these all things let me explain you now here you see first one this white color is my plasma membrane it's a plant, uh, sorry, it's an animal cell, so we will have only one layer protection, that is plasma membrane. Now, in our, can you see this liquid? That liquid is nothing but my cytoplasm. The liquid is my cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid where all the organelles are floating, like it's a swimming pool. It's a swimming pool and everyone are floating in it. Okay, you can remember it that way. Next, these are my centrioles. Okay, these are my centrioles help in my division isn't it next this is what this thing is my mitochondria what does it do mitochondria is the energy factory it produces it's a powerhouse right it produces a lot of uh, it produces what a lot of energy by cellular respiration in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate okay next one these curvy curvy things are what these are my S E R smooth endoplasmic reticulum and on the other hand this one is my R E R rough endoplasmic reticulum why is it so rough endoplasmic as in it is rough why because it has ribosomes attached to it there are ribosomes attached to it so that's why it is rough so that is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum and beside that we have the smooth one all right now, next is what? Next, you can see such things. This green color thing you can consider these are my vacuoles. 
vehicles to help in storage in plant they have very small small tiny tiny things or they may have no also but in plants there is a very large centrally located vacuum okay i'm going to explain you next one this circular ball like thing that is my golgi apparatus okay golgi apparatus so it was discovered by camillo golgi okay now we have done endoplasm reticulum nucleus cytoplasm centrioles plasma membrane vacuoles mitochondria so these are all the parts and these tiny tiny dots which you can see right these are my ribosomes okay ribosomes the small small parts and uh, this you can consider as my lysosomes okay lysosomes are my suicidal bag because they have the power to digest the whole cell so these are the parts of animal cell they can tell you in exam that this is a animal cell label it or they may ask you specific part then say this is abcd identified any way it can ask you okay so this is all about the animal cell moving towards plant cell now plant cell what for so there are two outer coverings there are two coverings the just dark green one is my cell wall it is my cell wall which is not present in the animal cell then again this uh, white colored part is my uh, plasma membrane or also known as the cell membrane correct after that what we have is again we have the cell i won't write the same thing now this this entire thing is my vacuole it is very large and it is very large it occupies 50 to 90% of the entire cell body again okay, plants this again is my headquarter nucleus isn't it then i have one extra thing that is plastids now plastids are of three types chloroplast chromoplast and leucoplast so chromoplast they give the color like you know if you take banana and apple they have different colors why because chromoplast is right gives the coloring chloroplast consists of chlorophyll which help in the photosynthesis and next we have the leucoplast which are plain in color whitish in color you can consider and it does the storage work okay then i have my tiny tiny um you can see these are my uh, lysosomes correct these are my lysosomes then we even have a uh, mitochondria this is mitochondria isn't it and again we have the endoplasmic reticulum rough and smooth then we have the golgi apparatus correct this is my uh, golgi apparatus and small small there are uh, ribosomes also so this is the part of plant cell there are two everything the same two new things are plastids plastids and cell wall these are the two new things present in uh, animal cell sorry plant cell plant cell now in um uh, in plant cell students one more question comes that golgi apparatus is also known as dictyosomes okay it's also known as dictyosomes in plant cells golgi apparatus is known as dictyosomes also okay so this is the diagram animal cell plant cell isn't it now let's move towards a important topic that is tonicity tonicity as in whenever i take a plant cell animal cell any cell if i put it in different kind of solution what will be the shape and structure based on that we have three types of solutions hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic okay now let me explain you hypotonic Hi, you can remember that we hypo hypo so it, the cell will become big okay the cell will go hypo it will become a hippo okay so you can remember that will become very big okay hypotonic there is the process of endosmosis okay and osmosis all right so what happens is in endosmosis oh sorry this is osmosis right sorry sorry yeah it's end osmosis correct osmosis is a special type of di uh, diffusion where the particles of water can enter or exit specifically through a selectively permeable membrane okay so in hypotonic solution end osmosis occur wherein the water or the solution goes inside the cell because inside the cell there is less concentration outside is more so from outside it goes inside okay coming towards isotonic isotonic it is neutral 
न्यूट्रल नथिंग इज हैपनिंग नो गोइंग आउट नो कमिंग इन कंसंट्रेशन इन बोथ द प्लेसेस इज इक्वल इन हाइपरटोनिक हैपेंस इज एक्सॉस्मोसिस ओके एक्सॉस्मोसिस ओके एक्सॉस्मोसिस एनीवे यू कैन राइट इट करेक्ट एक्सॉस्मोसिस व्हाट हैपेंड हियर इज दैट द सेल इट हैज मोर कंसंट्रेशन इनसाइड and there is less concentration in the environment so the shell uh, sorry the cell shrinks up so here you see hypotonic solution it will swell okay it will swell up due to water going inside endosmosis isotonic there will be no change because e uh, concentration is equal and hypotonic it will shrink what will happen exosmosis will take over it will shrink Okay, we are talking about the red blood cells. Even for the plant cells, the same thing happens. Usually, animal cells you uh, they can blast. They easily blast up in a hypotonic solution. But there is a turgid force applied in the plant cell by the cell wall, and it allows it allow like you know it accepts it from bursting and it doesn't burst. Okay, that is tonicity, a new topic. Correct. Next one, the last topic of the chapter is cell division, mitosis and meiosis. Okay. Now, when it about cell division, cell divide and they make new cell. The cell do not reproduce. Correct. Cell, the mother cell, the main cell only divides into two daughter cells, isn't it? So, based on that, we study the types of cell division. Mitosis results in the growth. For growth, now when a child till the age of fifteen, does the height remains the same? Obviously, no. All the parts of the body, hands, legs, your entire body grows. Why? That happens due to mitosis. Mitosis is the growth division. Okay. What happens here is that a mother cell, the main cell, is there. The DNA is replicated into two parts. Now the the it can't be that in one cell there is one DNA, other cell there are five DNA. It can't happen unequal. So what happens in the mother cell? The the there are the DNA gets replicated. It becomes equal. Now when it is equal, one part will go to other one. This one will go to other one. Then this and this will go to other one. So what happens? The cell starts to divide. The mother cell starts to divide. And what happened is, one of the uh, when the DNA is replicated, those two gets divided in each of the daughter cells, and then they entirely separate and become two individual daughter cells. That is known as cell division. There are many types anaphases. There are many phases are there in mitosis, but you do not need to learn them at all for now. You'll study that in your higher standard. So just remember what is mitosis: growth cell division. So due to growth, the cell will divide. So there is one mother cell divides into two daughter cells. That's it. Okay, that is mitosis. Next, coming towards meiosis. Meiosis is for the reproductive. It's for the reproductive division. What happens here is the gametes, the male and female gametes, they divide and make up the formation. For example. the human the male uh, the male gamete okay reproductive gamete will have you know comparatively less a uh, you know uh, uh, chromosomes and compared to the other part because the cell division is divided so haploid so in the ma main mother cell it divides okay it divides into two daughter cells and then next phase of meiosis occurs where it again divides into four so the what happen these two are known as the haploids Diploid is there, isn't it? So haploid and diploid are interchanged, and the meiosis occurs. This only happens in the gametes. Okay, in the sperm and the ova, these things will happen. That's it. It won't happen in any other part. In other parts for growth related, mitosis occurs. Reproductively, meiosis occurs. Okay, so that's all about it. Approximately in twenty minutes, we completed the first whole chapter. Quick revision, we did it. Correct. Now let's move towards some important questions. First question is why is endocytosis found in animals only? Now what is endocytosis? 
here you see you know you might have seen or you might have all studied about amoeba isn't it if there is a food particle here what will happen it's going to engulf it it's going to engulf it right that engulfing process is known as endocytosis okay now why is that endocytosis only found in animals why because animals are one whose plasma membrane is where they can easily grasp it plants do not need it isn't it so for endocytosis to occur the outermost membrane should be flexible like plasma membrane but in plant cell there is a cell wall and that is a it is dead made up of dead cells so it it is not flexible in nature correct it is it is very rigid so hence endocytosis occurs in animals only now here if you see uh, what happens is this plasma membrane right the plasma membrane it is quite flexible okay there is no other layer it is flexible so easily the amoeba can you know uh, engulf it and change the shape but talk about plant cells plant cells they have a one more layer of cell wall isn't it one more layer of cell wall now cell wall is very tough it won't allow easy division okay now moving to the next question which cell organelle controls most of the activities of the cell as i said it is always the nucleus nucleus is the only part it's the brain of the um, cell it controls metabolism cellular respiration dna replication everything okay the main head of the cell is nucleus only right so nucleus it is known as the brain of the cell it controls all the activities why because it has the dna full form dioxyribonucleic acid and it contains all the information cell as in the genetic information of the cell all right next question how is bacterial cell different from onion peel bacterial cell first of all it is prokaryote okay it's a prokaryotic cell onion peel it is a, a plant cell or you can say it is you know uh, eukaryote isn't it eukaryote so obviously there will be many differences first of all bacterial cell will have a flagella for movement but in onion peel the cells the onion cells will do not have that isn't it there will be a properly defined nucleus in onion cell whereas in bacteria it won't be there isn't it similarly what tells uh, there will be a cell wall in the onion peel because it's plant cell but in bacterial it won't be there look at the answer the size of bacteria will be small 1 to 10 uh, millimeter or nanometers you can say because it is quite small it is a prokaryote and eukaryotes are always large and they will be 5 to 100 millimeter nucleus is absent they have a nucleoid correct and here nucleus is present proper nucleus this is prokaryote this is eukaryote now cell division cell division is by fusion or budding sorry fission fission or budding by that process bacteria like yeast it happens through budding on the main mother cell a part is formed and it gets detached isn't it that is what happens in bacterial cells but in onion peel our mitosis occurs okay that is the major differences between bacterial cell and onion cell now moving to the next one write a note on golgi apparatus and the functions it perform golgi apparatus basically it was formed by camellia golgi isn't it the main function is of storage correct storing modification correct and even ribosome sorry lysosome production is also done by golgi apparatus let me show you when it occurred golgi apparatus also known as golgi body okay or golgi complex anything you can call it it is made up of membrane bound fluid filled vesicles it has uh, it is membrane bound there, there are some vesicles which are uh, fluids for the packaging there are vacuoles in it and there are cisterns cisterns as in the uh, folds in the golgi body now in animal cells they are larger and only one or two maximum but in plant cells there are very small 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 uh, golgi bodies and they are large in number now in plant cells as i said they are even known as dictyosomes in plant cells they are known as dictyosomes and distributed throughout the cytoplasm every corner you will find a golgi body functions transportation modification of proteins and lipids made by the endoplasmic reticulums smooth and rough 
as well as carbohydrate okay it even it does helps the formation of cell plate during the cell division cell plate a cell membrane also does a little bit contribution while cell division okay it's involved in the formation of cell wall plasma membrane lysosomes and peroxisomes okay so lysosomes the main thing you should remember is lysosomes are coming where it is coming from the golgi body cell wall formation giving cell wall the needed thing plasma membrane all of those things are done by the golgi body itself okay now the materials which are synthesized near the er it is packed and dispatched to various targets outside the cell also through the golgi body so what is the main function you remember is transportation modification of what protein and lipids next it helps for its uh, it is packaging dispatching outside the cell also correct and even they it the main function is the formation of lysosomes that is also done by the golgi body so with this we have completed with our first chapter fundamental unit of life that is completed moving towards the next that is tissues tissues again just remember the names function location i have made two videos just two videos on the whole chapter for plant tissues and animal tissues make sure to refer that i'll put it in the i section above please check it because that is the only thing you need to remember i i have not explained detailed things and no just remember the diagrams what is the location of each cell function and structure and these three specifically students believe me i have made only these three contents in that so make sure you check those videos also we're looking towards the mind map tissues are what previously we studied about cells isn't it we studied about cells so when cells come together we get a tissue so that is what we are studying now tissues so tissues are what they are nothing but the group of cells which are similar in structure and function now tissues they are majorly divided into two parts simple as well as sorry they divide into plant and animal okay let me help you with the diagram okay let me help you with the diagram i'll explain you through that see here talking about uh, tissues right tissues there are many type of tissues in this world isn't it but you have to learn only the major ones for now isn't it plant and animal plant and animals correct then plant again there are two subdivisions two subdivisions are plant has uh, meristematic right they have meristems or meristematic same thing and permanent okay and permanent now meristematic they have more three types okay they have more three types that are apical apical meristem then lateral meristem and intercalary meristem okay these are the three types i'm going to uh, explain you them all right now what uh, what next in permanent also there are of uh, more two types simple permanent and complex permanent okay i know it's a little bit lengthy but uh, listen to me what i'm telling okay simple permanent have more three types parenchyma then uh, colenchyma and sclerenchyma okay these are present in my simple permanent as in they have the same type of cell and in complex i have two xylem and phloem all right this is all about my plant okay in the plant these are the parts i'm going to explain you them one by one okay now talk about animal animal again they have four divisions okay four divisions are present okay four divisions are there let me explain you first one is epithelial first one is epithelial tissue okay epithelial next one is muscular muscular then we have connective connective and then we have nervous okay please forgive me for my handwriting i know less spaces there so i'm just adjusting okay now epithelial not right here it will waste a lot of time so i'll just orally tell you epithelial has more types there is squamous okay there is a let short form squamous there is cuboidal there is columnar 
and there is glandular okay columnar again has one more type ciliated columnar okay there are many sub 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 types also which you don't need to remember now muscular they have three types first one skeletal then smooth and cardiac muscular connective i'll give you a trick to remember a a b b t l c remember it that way why it's a mnemonic you can consider why a a b b t l c a a areolar adipose b b blood bone tlc tendon ligament cartilage remember it that way it will be easy. if you remember blood cartilage tendon it will be difficult remember in this way a a b b t l c a a b b t l c that are my connective tissue and nervous tissue nothing but my neuron correct neuron okay now what happened is let me help uh, explain each one of them talking about plant tissue let's come to plant first we have three as i said meristematic and permanent meristems have apical lateral intercalary isn't it apical meristem it uh, it is at the apex apex as in the tips the tips of the roots the stems and everywhere it helps in the uh, you know a uh, growth okay growth intercalary sorry let me lateral lateral is in the internodes okay it is a present in the internodes oh sorry sorry not uh, no sorry 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 not uh, lateral lateral is present laterally on the uh, stem body correct it increases the girth it increases the girth as in the widthness is increased by the lateral now intercalary intercalary it is present in in the internodes okay between two nodes the internode is there so in that internode it helps in the growth so that are the three terms meristematic one important thing is that they are uh, dividing tissues okay they are dividing tissues they keep on dividing now these meristematic tissues are converted to permanent tissue by a process of differentiation so let me explain you see here talking about if uh, uh, the meristems right the meristems what are they they are dividing tissues correct they divide correct they continuously keep on dividing apical intercalary and uh, lateral but now it gets converted into permanent tissues permanent tissues which is not dividing they do not divide is it and uh, it, it not dividing correct not dividing so there is no division happening here and that process through which meristems are converted into permanent is known as differentiation differentiation is the process where meristematic tissues lose their power of dividing and convert into permanent tissues okay and students if you are worrying about these slides all the notes you will be getting it in the description box so please do not worry now permanent again has two types simple complex now what is simple and complex For simple has three types parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma right let us do i know this is a little bit small small place i do not have even space let me explain you here so see simple simple permanent have three types parenchyma okay parenchyma does what parenchyma is the part which helps in the storage also it helps in storage okay it helps in storage okay it has very less intercellular okay uh, no it has large intercellular spaces okay now there are further two more types also that is chlorenchyma not colenchyma okay it's chlorenchyma chlorenchyma and erenchyma so chlorenchyma as in it has chloroplast okay it has chlorophyll chloroplast you can say and in some plants it performs a photosynthesis erenchyma it has air cavities large air spaces are present so that plants can easily float now lotus what really how do they float on the water because they have large amount of erenchyma so due to that they can easily float next type is colenchyma 
Colin Kaiman or tell me students if you have ever seen and if you take a plant okay the stem of it the stem of you try to bend it it will not break immediately right it will bend at some extent so that is nothing but the Colin Kaiman it produces the flexibility the flexibility of uh, the plant is produced by the Colin Kaiman right next one is Clearan Kaiman okay Sclerin chyma, it's my dead one. Okay, it's dead. It basically provides the support. Okay, support is provided, support to the plant, like the hard parts, right? Support and the hard parts, as in the husk, bark, right? Those all things have sclerin chyma. All right, the, the coconut outside part, the husk of coconut is very hard and strong. Why? Because it has clear and kind in it. That are my simple tissues. Okay, now the cell wall, I'll tell you. This session, I go straight, it will go a little bit lengthy, I know, because it's a marathon session, right? So, parenchyma, the cell wall. The cell wall is made up of cellulose. Cell wall is made up of cellulose. A colon chyma is made up of pectin. And hemicellulose, okay. Sclerin chyma is made up of lignin. Okay, it's made up of lignin. Okay, so these are the types of simple permanent, okay, simple permanent tissues, parent, colon, and sclerin. Now coming to what's complex, that are xylem and phloem. Xylem conducts water, water and minerals. Phloem conducts the food prepared by the leaves xylem have more four types that are not types as in the components trachees vessels then xylem fibers and xylem parenchyma okay next phloem i have explained all of this in details i'm just quickly going through it okay then phloem it has again types sieve tubes companion cell and phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers okay so that is all about now plant tissues hey now now moving towards animal first one comes the epithelial tissue epithelial tissue it has squamous cuboidal columnar and glandular now talking about uh, squamous stratified uh, multi-layered stratified as in there are many layers okay so that is present in our skin the human skin has stratified squamous epithelial tissue Correct. Similarly, the simple one, simple squamous is present in mouth lining and even the internal walls of the, uh, what is it, blood vessel. Okay, and there are also simple squamous is there. Talking about cuboidal, cuboidal is present in the kidney tubules. It is in the cube, cube, cube kind of shape. Okay, there are like cube, uh, cube kind of shapes it is present. Okay, cube kind of shapes the cuboidal epithelial are present. Columnar, columnar, they they are like tall buildings and nucleus at the bottom. Tall buildings, nucleus at the bottom. Okay, that is columnar. Present in what? It is present in the fallopian tube. It's present in the intestines, respiratory tract also, isn't it? So columnar have one more type, ciliated columnar epithelium. That is, it is present in, uh, it has, you know, cilia, like this is my uh, one and this is my one. So, it has, you know, hair kind of structures on it, known as cilia. Okay, it is present in the respiratory tract. Okay, that is all about the epithelial tissue. Next comes uh, nervous tissue. Nerve, okay, let me explain that at the end. Now, uh, comes the connective tissue. Connective tissue, uh, as I said, A, A, B, B, T, L. See, I have to explain you with a slide. Okay, let me explain you here. So, see, talk about connective tissues, right? So, connective tissues, they are of how many times? Let me write it here quickly. So, students, here you see I have written them already, right? So that we don't waste much of time. Now, here you see areolar tissue, A, A, B, B, T, L, C, I have explained you, right? So, connective tissue, the main function, they have a matrix in them and they do the connection purposes. They connect two things together, right? I have, explained, I have made a detailed video also, you can refer to that. Areolar tissue. The first one is areolar. It is a packaging tissue, okay? It is a packaging tissue. Wherever there are empty spaces, wherever there's empty space, it goes and fills this, right? It is a supporting and packaging tissue which is formed between the organs lying in the body, okay? Like in between the skin and muscle, skin and muscles, 
okay there are some space so areolar is there okay adipose tissue it stores fat okay fat is stored in adipose tissue specifically known as adipocytes in adipocytes we have the fat stored which is in the adipose tissue okay now bones bones you know it is the hardest part of the body okay it is uh, super hard correct it is very hard now it, apart from that it has a matrix inside it correct it has a haversian ha canal isn't it through which the nutrients are transported it's made up of what calcium okay mostly calcium and phosphorus both is there what cells are present the cell name are osteocytes okay osteocytes are present in the bone okay next comes blood blood is a fluid connective tissue why because it has a fluid matrix the matrix is fluid it's a liquid isn't it that is plasma correct plasma is the fluid present in the the matrix present in the blood the what are the types red blood cell white blood cell then uh, leukos uh, the platelet sorry right all of them are present in the blood talk about tendon so tendon do muscle to bone connection okay muscle and bone the how do they connect to each other for movement by the help of tendon okay ligament connect bone to bone Bo two bones in the joints happen by the ligaments okay ligaments join bone to bone cartilage it's known as the soft bone it's known as a soft bone now if you touch the tip of your uh, nose tip of your nose it is flexible right it is flexible now touch the upper part of your nose upper part of the nose it is hard it has a bone in it whereas the tip of the nose it is soft correct it is like there is something correct but it is soft smoothly moving that is cartilage okay that is cartilage so these are the connective tissue areolar adipose bone blood tendon ligament and cartilage okay next type we are moving towards is the uh muscular tissue okay important this is important okay muscular tissue now talk about muscular tissue no complications three types are present right we'll explain you quickly what are the three types first one is skeletal muscle also known as striated muscle it is skeletal also known as striated or striated you can say whatever you want Stri striated muscle what is the function I'll draw it and explain how you can write in the exam they can ask you because this is a muscular tissue are very simple to draw so they can ask you to draw it so how can they come so how how they may come is that you can draw like this uh huh okay they are cylindrical okay they are cylindrical in nature and they have light a uh, light and dark alternate light and dark uh, striations they have light and dark bands known as striations in them okay and there are many nucleus they are multinucleated okay so skeletal muscles are connected with uh, they are connected to bones they help in the movement and they are voluntary in nature voluntary as in means i can control them it's under my power i want to move i will move it okay so that is how you draw the skeletal muscle they are unbranched okay no branches multinucleated voluntary and striations are present cylindrical in nature simple moving towards the next one that is smooth muscle smooth muscle also known as unstriated okay how can you draw that they are very easy to draw they are spindle shaped okay they are spindle shaped okay they are spindle shaped no branches no cylindrical nothing just one one nucleus as you, you how your eyes are looking like that way you can draw it. okay they are involuntary in nature students okay they are involuntary they are involuntary in nature why because they uh, we, we cannot control them for example the iris of the eye correct in the stomach can we control that no smooth muscles are present so they are involuntary spindle shape uh, uninucleated no striations okay next one the last one is cardiac now have we ever heard about cardiologist who are cardiologist the people who treat 
heart and heart related problems so cardiac as in these are the heart muscles present in the heart again they are also involuntary okay they are also involuntary how can you draw it they are basically cylindrical okay they are uh, cylindrical and branched also they are cylindrical and branched okay i am just roughly drawing it here you see they are cylindrical and branched they have li uh, light light striations not very dark also light striations are present okay next they are branched main thing is they are branched and again they are multinucleated you know they are multinucleated they have more than one nucleus okay so uh, they are present in the heart the main thing in the heart we have the cardiac muscle which never stop they keep on moving the rhythmic contractions right they are branch present in the heart uh, cylindrical and branch right and it is multinucleated this is my muscular tissue next talking about our last one that is nervous tissue right students if you want to break you can uh, pause this video as it's a premium no problem you can pause it go have some water if you want to eat some you can eat it and then you can come back and continue okay so talking about nervous tissue the main thing is neurons the main thing is neurons so there is a question i've added for neurons so with the help of that i'll help you okay in explaining the the, about neurons so nervous tissue nothing but you have to just and just remember that it transfers the uh, electrical impulses now this nervous tissue the part of it is coming in your next grade also students that is in your 10th control and coordination if you have seen i have been making video if i ever checked it okay there's no need to check also because you are in 9th but if you want to study it still you can refer to it nervous tissue neurons there's a whole entire detailed chapter about it in 10th standard okay chapter number 2 control coordination okay so this is all about tissue students many things we did you can take a screenshot or i'll upload this in the um a description box this is a tissue what are the types meristematic permanent differentiation simple permanent tissue right then the connective tissue the function correct then we have the muscular tissue isn't it so let's move towards some questions now okay now our first question is differentiate between parenchyma and colenchyma okay parenchyma colenchyma there can be many differences for example parenchyma helps in supporting colenchyma helps in the uh, flexibility Correct flexibility. Uh, similarly, colenchyma cell wall is made up of pectin. Correct. For uh, parenchyma, it is made up of cellulose. You can write that difference also. So let me show you. Uh, parenchyma it has thin cell walls. Okay, they are thin cell walls, and colenchyma they have localized thickening. Like you can say irregularly thickened. Okay. Now in plant cells they are distributed in every part of the cell, uh, plant. There is parenchyma located, but in colenchyma only the aerial parts, as in the shoot parts. Okay, like the stems. Right in there the colenchyma is present. Now, parenchyma they even assimilate and store food. They even store, you know do the storage work. Whereas colenchyma helps in the mechanism and young parts of the plant so that they can be easily flexible. Right? Colenchyma it's made up of compactly packed cells, whereas uh, parenchyma is loosely packed cells. Okay, that is the uh, answer. Okay. Next question, what is a neuron? Write the structure and function. Now, students, in, uh, in my previous sessions, I've already explained that. Correct. I'll uh, Let me show you how to draw it. In your exam, they may ask you definitely that how to draw a neuron. Explain it. Right. Let me adjust this. So, how can you draw that? Let me help you with a rough diagram. Okay. So, how you can draw? You can draw like this. You know, you can start with the use, you making. You know, you can make such use. You can make such use. Right. And then you can make like this. Make the endings. Alright. Like this you can make. Now in middle, this is it. Then you can make the sheets also. Right. I'm roughly drawing it currently. Okay. I've made the good diagrams and photos. Everything are present in the detailed session. I'll show you now also. Now what happens is labeling is very important these are my dendrites dendrites correct the whole part is known as cyton or the cell cell body okay this part is the axon which carries the impulses the electrical impulses this is the myelin sheath acts as the uh, 
acts as the protect uh, you know insulation so that the it doesn't leaks okay and the space between two myelin sheets is known as the nodes of ranvier okay it's known as the nodes of ranvier all right and at end this is the axon or the nerve ending okay what happens is the dendrites they receive the information they pass it through the cyton goes through the axon okay now axon has a myelin sheath which helps in the you know uh, the information doesn't leaks out so we have the myelin sheath for insulation and through the nerve ending the uh, information goes to the another sensory organ or the neuron okay now let me show you see here nervous tissue they only have one highly specialized unit that is known as the nerve cells or the neurons that is only the major part of a uh, nervous tissues okay now neurons are few parts three parts are majorly three parts you have to study for now but in 10th anyways you will study the detailed so first is the cyton that is uh, that it has a nucleus centrally nucleus then there is cytoplasm right and there are some pa stained particle known as nasal granules nasal can say that there are some dark uh, you know stained particles in the cell body dendrites there is like arising hair like structure present on the cyton to receive the information okay axon it is a long cylindrical tube like structure okay and it carries the impulse from the cyton and gives to the other part okay look over here as you can see here nucleus these are the uh, nissel particle dendrites then cell body now the tube kind of structure this tube and everything that's the axon we have myelin sheath correct the space between two myelin sheath node or ranvier now the nucleus or the cells in the myelin sheath are known as schwann cells and these are the axon terminals to pass on the electrical signals or the impulses okay now next question is differentiate between meristematic and permanent tissue now uh, meristematic tissues they continuously divide the dividing tissues whereas permanent tissue they do not divide they have lost their ability cells are undifferentiated means differentiation are not taken place permanent they are fully differentiated because from that process only they are made now cells are small and isodiametric uh, as in the diameter is of equal size now in permanent the cells are variable in shape and size intercellular spaces are very very less or absent in meristematic but permanent they have large and you know visible spaces vacuoles are absent because division has to take place so no vacuoles but in permanent they have large vacuoles in the mature cells metabolism is at a high rate why because it is continuously dividing so high metabolism is required permanent uh, tissue metabolism is low why because there is no division next cell walls are very thin but here it can be thin also but mostly it is thick that are the major if you write any fire points also for a fire marker you will get full marks okay now next question the last question of the day because it's almost been one hour we have been doing the session so yes it will be really really helpful for your midterm exams now we have to describe the structure and function of different epithelial tissues and draw the diagrams also so basically how we know what are the types simple squamous stratiformes, and then columnar and cuboidal are the various types isn't it here you see squamous tissue simple one stratified present in our skin columnar if there is ciliated there will be small small hair kind of structure and then cuboidal these are the types you can learn to draw from your books right you can refer it simple squamous simple squamous tissues are present in the lining of blood vessels or alveoli also to do the transportation of substances and it has a selectively permeable surface okay and there's a flat can do you know here there is a basement membrane there is a basement membrane in squamous okay stratified squamous in our skin on this the skin is made up of stratified squamous means it has many layers okay to prevent the wear and tear now inside a body no one can go inside and tear it right so that's why the simple things are there but outside that it can be easily torn out so there is a multi-layered squamous tissue okay they are arranged in pattern of layers and the epithelial this kind is called a stratified squamous
next one is columnar okay columnar the absorption takes place absorption secretion in the inner lining of intestine okay they are tall building like structures okay and they facilitate the movement across the epithelial barrier now in the uh, trachea like the respiratory tract we have the ciliated columnar which helps in the uh, hair production and it increases the surface area okay it uh, it helps to move the mucus also to clear it the ciliated columnar okay uh, then there is cuboidal also which helps in the same function as in it's present in the intestine in the fallopian tubes also in the cheek cells also right and the glandular it's present in the glands okay and with that students we have completed with our today's session thank you so much and it was a little bit lengthy one hour only so we have covered both the chapters it was a marathon session so yes so we have covered both the chapters fundamental unit as well as tissues make sure to like this video students please and share the video with every one of your friends so that they can also study for exams comment if you like the video and what more video you uh, want and if any doubts are there and make sure to subscribe the channel if you didn't do it till now i'll be seeing you guys very soon and more such interesting concepts as well as new chapters in our videos till then take care everyone and goodbye thank you so much